lace and albatross. Everything about them is extraordinary. In the Hawaiian language, they are known as moli and are considered sacred. They navigate huge distances, sometimes flying for days over the seas without a single wing beat. On land, they dance for years before they choose a mate. Then their love for each other lasts a lifetime, which could be 60 years or more, longer than any other wild bird. They only need solid ground to raise a family. Fledglings aren't taught how to fish or fly. When they're ready to take flight for the first time, they'll have to figure it out for themselves. Midway Atoll, a small island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, is the mothership of these albatross, the place where most moly come from. But Midway is also a sinking ship and is destined to be submerged as sea levels rise in the coming decades. So where will these millions of birds go? The Hawaiian island of Kauai is the one place on Earth where moly have chosen to nest among humans and it may be one of their only hopes for survival. To me, they are, they are so important. They are so important to our culture. Uh, we hold birds in very high regard. Some of the, the most prized gifts that you can give someone, most prized awards are feather lays, feather kahili, uh, things that symbolize very high achievement. This is a story about one chick named Kalama. In Hawaiian, Kalama means the light from a flame or enlightenment. Kalama's biological parents nested too close to a Navy runway. Because of fear that the birds might collide with airplanes, the eggs are carefully taken from parents who are at risk and then driven to safe nesting spots on the other side of the island where they are given to parents whose eggs are known to be infertile. Kalama's egg is placed in a nest with two mothers. Female nesting pairs are not uncommon amongst mole. These mothers accept their new baby without the slightest hesitation, and they dote on her from the moment she hatches. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology sets up a live streaming camera for the season so people from all over the globe can watch Kalama hatch and grow. She quickly steals the hearts of more than a million viewers around the world. I'm very happy today, especially, uh, to be here in the district of Ko'olau. Uh, I'm here with some of the members of our halau to experience a special place and to visit one of the protected uh, colonies of Moli. We were invited to um, to name the newly hatched chicks or uh, baby moli. It's a great privilege to watch them up close here today and um, it's been very entertaining just sitting here and being quiet and reflective and watching the little ones do their own little things and their own quirks. The albatross that fly across the sky remind me of the canoe that sails across the ocean. It was such a great privilege and opportunity to be here, <clears throat> knowing that we're able to engage and name Molly. <laughs> It was the personal experience that I saw these birds display amongst themselves. But more importantly, is what it did for me. I don't know if anyone can even understand <laughs> what I'm saying, because I witnessed that today in looking at the uh, moli, that we had an uh, awesome experience to kind of take a look at. Baby moli face many risks, including predators like dogs, cats, and pigs and there's never a guarantee that their parents will survive at sea and return to feed them. Kalama is fortunate. With high-octane meals from her moms, she begins to strengthen her wings. 
The older she gets, the stronger she gets, and the less she sees of her parents. They spend more and more time foraging at sea just to find enough food for their baby. They fly all over the North Pacific, from British Columbia to Alaska to Japan. Soon it will be Kalama's turn to take the same journey, although no one has shown her how to fly. Why does one baby bird matter so much? It's because these magnificent birds are facing the biggest threat their species has ever known. Global sea levels are rising. When the nesting grounds at Midway Atoll are submerged, millions of moli will be left without a home. Kauai is safe for three reasons. It has elevated bluffs, there are no mongoose that plague the rest of Hawaii, and it has people who care. Kauai could be their Noah's Ark. Maybe what the mole is doing is actually talking to us, teaching us, inspiring us of what this place is. That out of all the places that they could choose, maybe it's reminding us how special this place is and reminding us that we need to care for it. The time has come for Kalama to leave her beautiful island. Even though no one has taught her how to fly, and she has only one chance to get it right. Once she flies, her feet won't touch ground again for several years. If she's successful, she will return home to the very place where she hatched to start her own family, and hopefully, will lead more moly back to Kauai. Kalama's journey is just beginning. Oh, mm -hmm.